That's interesting. When you turn ESP off, you automatically also turn off the start and stop mode. How are those two related? Today I'm driving the Maserati Quattro Porte, and when I say the Maserati Quattro Porte, I mean the Maserati Quattro Porte rather than a Maserati Quattro Porte. Because as many people know, Quattro Porte means four doors in Italian. And the name Quattro Porte for Maserati back in the 60s when the Quattro Porte first came out, it was quite a big deal because it was a four door Maserati, it was a four door Grand Tour, it was something that wasn't really there before. Uh, but nowadays, there is the Ghibli, which is a smaller model, there is the Levante, which is the SUV, and they are all kind of four-door, five-door for the Levante if you want, but that kind of makes the name Quattro Porte a bit odd, because this is the Maserati Quattro Porte, but it's not the only four-door Maserati there is. The choice of the name is not really that relevant then. So what is the Quattro Porte? Well, it's Maserati's flagship model. It's its largest saloon. And when I say large, I mean large. This thing is 5.2 meters long. And honestly, for Switzerland, this is probably too long. But what it means is the back passengers get a lot of space. I mean, it has 3.1 meters of uh, wheelbase. And all in all, it's very large, it's very spacious, but it's not as spacious as you might think because being sporty, being sloped, having a lower roof line, it's, it doesn't have that much room to the top. So depending on where you sit, sometimes you will touch the roof. So despite this being a very large car, it doesn't give you this huge impression of space. Then again, four people can ride in this car very comfortably. Despite being large, this car has another, let's call it a little disadvantage, and it comes with a size, it's very heavy. In fact, this car I'm driving right here is 2.2 tons. And 2.2 tons is heavy. This car is equipped with a twin turbo V6 engine, three liters, 430 horsepower, 565 newton meters of torque, and the engine is adequate. I mean, the car is very heavy, so the engine, it does what it can, but even if the engine is great, you come to a corner, you realize, ooh, the car is heavy. Luckily, this model is equipped with Maserati's Q4 all-wheel drive system, meaning that basically it makes it a quite a safe drive. Even now with traction control off and everything, I can drive this car quite happily and it's very well behaved. I mean, you still feel it. It's, it's heavy in these tight corners, yeah you don't want to overdo it but this is a very large car you can have fun with speaking of having fun with the engine yes it has 430 horsepower 565 newton meters in torque it's a powerful engine but as i mentioned before this is a heavy car and therefore performance it doesn't feel that great. I'm not saying that the performance is bad because this car does zero to 100 kph in under five seconds, which is good, especially considering the, the weight of it. But it's not really something that blows you away. It's adequate, it feels all right. But I mean, there is a reason why Maserati also offer a larger 3.8 liter V8 twin turbo engine that produces 565 horsepower. The V8, however, is only available as rear wheel drive, which some people may see as an advantage. Personally, I would prefer it as a four wheel drive because in Switzerland, four wheel drive, very useful if you wanna drive the car all year round. And also, I don't understand why the V8 isn't available in four wheel drive on the Quattro Porte, while it is available in four wheel drive on the Levante, on the SUV. And as far as I understand, they are not that uh, technically different, these cars. So, yeah. As with all modern performance cars, the uh, Quattroporte, of course, also has different driving modes. And it has a normal mode, it has a sport mode, and it has an ICE mode. Ice mode, ice mode, which is something like economy whatever you want um, when driving around normally the car is 
reasonably comfortable. It's pretty much a Grand Tourer. You can put the suspension in a harder sport mode, which I'm gonna do now. And you can also put the engine in sports mode and then you have like a, a better, uh, better pedal response and a bit more sound from the exhaust. speed automatic as usually is excellent you can shift with these nice metal pedals that stay in place the way they're supposed to and it shifts quite quickly it does a good job and when you're in manual mode it revs into the limiter it doesn't change up which is very nice that said the gear ratios on this car they seem a bit tall because in first gear and even in second gear you don't get away as quickly as you would expect to. The car takes a moment to rev up. I don't know if it's really the gear ratio or if it's turbo lag, but anyway, it's just a bit much. And despite being such a heavy car, it feels very secure to drive, even with ESP off. That's certainly also thanks to the Q4 all-wheel drive system. And all in all, the car it performs really well for being such a large car. <laughs> the car is generally rear wheel drive, but it can give up to 50% of the power to the front wheels when it needs it. This makes it still for a very sporty drive, despite being all-wheel drive. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the all-wheel drive system for when the weather's bad, for when you need it, and you get the rear-wheel drive for when you want to have fun. Of course, this being an older car, you cannot put it rear-wheel drive only. So the four-wheel drive, it's self-managed. Speaking about older car, the Maserati Quattro Porte, the model I'm driving now, originally came out in 2012. So it's by now seven years old. It just got a little refresh, along with an updated infotainment, which supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, whatever you want, all the necessary thing. It has a nice uh, capacitive touchscreen. It's up to date, it's very modern. There's actually nothing you miss. It even has uh, some assistance system. It has adaptive cruise control. It has lane keep uh, assist. It has a highway mode, which automatically keeps the distance to, to the next car in front of you, who keeps you in lane. It's autonomy, autonomous driving level two, if you want such a thing. Because still a Maserati, I think, is a car you want to drive yourself and not be driven in. And the Quattroporte is quite interesting in that it's a very large car that manages to handle quite well. And I mean, it handles surprisingly well while still being comfortable, which I think is quite an achievement. And here with the Q4 all-wheel drive system, this is a car that's usable all year round. My only quibbles with the car is basically, it's a bit too large, especially too long. I mean, if I park it with the nose against the wall, it hangs out about half a meter at least on basically any parking space here. But I think that's all right. It's the Quattro Porte's trademark of being Maserati's flagship. Therefore, it obviously has to be larger than the smaller Ghibli. Because with the smaller Ghibli, it also shares quite a lot of mechanicals. For example, the drivetrain, engine, transmission, four-wheel drive system, all the same. I think even the front doors are the same. And then from the B pillars backwards, this is a different car. But it also brings me to the point, if you don't need all this space, wouldn't you be better off with a Ghibli? I think you would. If you're basically interested in the performance, but don't need all the space, then probably a Ghibli would be a better buy as it's way cheaper um, and also more compact and a bit nicer to use around the smaller streets of Switzerland or wherever you are. If you're in the USA and everything is huge, then yes, Quattro Porte all the way. Something that actually astonished me a bit when driving the Quattro Porte is that it's not as 
harsh as modern equivalents or let's say the modern breed of sports cars um, for example also take an Alfa Romeo if you take an Alfa Quadrifoglio the moment you push the pedal it's like bam the gear is in and in this it's kind of smoother a bit slower I don't know if it's intentional because this is more of a luxury car than a sports car or if back then they just were not able to do it because let's remind us this car originally came out seven years ago and if I have to speak about price that's where I had a bit of problems with the Quattroporte because this car Quattroporte S 3 liter twin turbo V6 430 horsepower Grand Sport because there's also Grand Lusso version which is a bit has wood and stuff and this has got like black interior trims uh, whatever I will probably go the Grand Lusso because the car is comfortable so why not take the Grand Luxury car instead of the Grand Sport version they have the same engine um, this car has a base price of 139,000 Swiss francs which is already quite high however this car also has options it's I don't believe it's fully spec'd out but it has another 30,000 Swiss francs of options so this car is 169,000 Swiss far francs and with delivery charges it gets to 170,000 so this is a 170,000 franc car which is fine I mean this is a luxury car this is the highest segment what I'm not that fine with is for that I'm not getting a lot of toys I mean yes it has level 2 autonomous driving great it has ventilated seats which are optional but it doesn't have massaging seats I mean in in a luxury Grand Tour, yeah I, I'd like to have massaging seats it doesn't have a head-up display which okay I personally don't need it I'm not the biggest fan of it but others have it so even with all these options you do not get that much value from this car also funny thing this car had one option it has tinted windows in the back privacy windows in the rear um, they cost 1,900 francs <laughs> tinted windows in the rear cost 1,900 francs the premium Bowers and Wilkins sound system in this car was only a 1,800 francs upgrade so the tinted windows are more expensive than the premium stereo at 170,000 Swiss francs this car is a bit expensive because also it doesn't give you that wow performance because for that you would have to get the larger V8 model which is even more expensive so I do not really see the value in this car however this is a Maserati so depreciation will be strong I mean all luxury cars depreciate no doubt about that but Maserati's maybe a little bit more in fact I've seen you can get a two-year-old Quattroporte same spec as this one also the updated uh, infotainment screen with about 4,000 kilometers for half the price for about 85,000 Swiss francs so yeah I wouldn't buy a Maserati Quattroporte new but used they can be quite interesting looks I think this Quattroporte generation looks a bit generic and I mean it doesn't look like any other car on the road but it looks like any other Maserati because the resemblance to the Gran Turismo to Maserati's Coupe they are very strong and it's actually very very similar looking to the Ghibli which is the smaller model and I personally I usually cannot tell them apart so unless I read what model it is I don't know which model is which and I think it's a bit of a pity because the previous gen Quattroporte it was a very distinctive looking car and in my view it was maybe a bit more pretty than this one but all in all the Quattroporte is still you know a more distinctive looking car than your average German competitor so who is the Quattroporte for? well it's for the very wealthy person who needs the space who needs the large car but still wants something that's you know fun to drive that handles really really well and in this case with a four-wheel drive system is even usable all year round 
Um, is it the most modern car in its segment? No. Is it the most luxurious car in its segment? No. Is it the fastest car in its segment? Not that either. But I would argue that it's one of the best handling cars and one of the cars that, you know, has the most distinctive look. So if you want a car that's got a bit more soul, that's got a bit more spirit, that's got a bit more Italianità, let's be honest, the Quattro Porte, even at seven years old, is still quite a good car. This is really the driver's executive saloon. And as such, I like it. What is your opinion on the Quattro Porte? Do you think this car still manages to play with the big boys from Germany and Japan? Leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos in the future. And otherwise, thank you for watching and I'm gonna drive a bit more. Ah! <sighs>